everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, we are going to talk about ways to stay healthy and fit during and right after the coronavirus. So welcome back to the show. Um, If you are an avid follower, thank you so much for being here each week and every week. I really appreciate your support and the fact that you keep returning. If you are loving this podcast and you know a person that could use the information, please share it with them. You know, tell them about the podcast. I would love to help out as many people as I possibly can. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. I I believe we're in like 138 days since quarantine officially started. And I know like health agencies are stressing the importance of staying at home during this pandemic, which I am 100% on board with. And most people for the first time are working from home and maybe you're adapting and maybe you're not quite adapting. Uh, If you hear some crunching in the background, my dog has decided to chew on her rawhide at this present moment, (laughs) so I apologize for any extra little crunchy noises you hear in the background. That is my dog, Trixie, and she is loving her rawhide bone. So again, most people are working from home for the first time. There's a lot of people that had to homeschool their children, and I know for me, um, I had thought about homeschooling when they were little, but that is not the direction I want to go in like I there's a reason why there's other people that can help (laughs) my kids learn the information that they need to know which is my personal opinion I know some wonderful friends of mine who do homeschool their kids on even before COVID and um, you know they're doing fantastic but me personally I that would be something hard to do for me some people are having to work from home and homeschool the kids and I know that can be challenging and if you are home with a full house of people that you love dearly but you might not want to spend all your time with (laughs) stress levels can get high and the also the feeling of being stuck at home and not being able to spend time like you usually do can open up a whole new level of emotions and i think as americans we sometimes take for granted our freedom meaning that we get to go out and we can do things and we have freedom of speech and all that you know i um my husband and i a long time ago had the opportunity to go to saint petersburg in russia and it was just it was part of a um a a trip and we got to go for a day but we literally got we were on a boat and we got off the boat and got on a bus and when we got off the bus there were armed guards at all times around us and we pretty much you know we were told exactly how long we had to visit in the hermitage and how long we had to visit at each place it was a fabulous experience but and i don't know if if they live that way or it was just because we as americans were coming in but i would not want to be in a country where you know we're escorted around by guns and and all that so you know because we are being forced not forced but because we are in quarantine and those types of emotions can come up of feeling stuck in your house and not being able to kind of get out and some of these emotions might be from fear sacrifice um, lack and scarcity like there's not a lot lot of toilet paper around or things like that and in normal circumstances these emotions are not as heightened but now that everyone is going through the same issue all at the same time all these emotions are magnified and I think we see that in the things that are going on in the world again just my opinions you are welcome to have your opinions as well (laughs) so now with all that going on now add in a stocked pantry and a completely full fridge If you're an emotional eater, you are going to have a strong desire to overeat. Strong. Because your emotions are heightened, and if food is your comfort and what you gravitate towards, that is where you're going to go. You may find that you're bored, or you find yourself peeking into the refrigerator a lot, or into the cabinets. You may be looking for a mood change from work or from homeschooling the kids. You might be pulling out a third bowl of ice cream before it's even noon because why not? You get to wear sweatpants or pajamas to work now, at least from the bottom down, if you're doing Zoom calls or video chats. So if you're finding it challenging to socially distance yourself with the refrigerator, I want to offer these suggestions. And before we dive into those suggestions, 
wanted to let you know about a free course that I am offering. It's called Six Simple Steps to End Cravings. And I want you to imagine how different your life would be without the cravings that you have. Part of the reason why I started Shape It Up is I'm really committed to helping women over 40 lose the extra 40 pounds for life and have that I feel awesome in my clothes energy all day long. And part of the problem is our cravings. And I want to invite you to check out my free course called Six Simple Steps to End Cravings. You can have access to Six Simple Steps to End Your Cravings at shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings with an S. So that's shapeitupfitness.com slash stop cravings with an S at the end. Okay, so if you are finding it challenging to socially distance yourself from your refrigerator, I want to offer these suggestions. So even though your pantry and your fridge are stocked, doesn't mean you need to eat all the food. When we first went into lockdown, I actually had the opposite effect of this because I had had some frozen broccoli or some vegetables that I had on hand and I kept telling myself I have to save the vegetables because at the time I wasn't sure if I was going to have access to vegetables and I was eating a bunch of like crappy foods and I was like, and I caught myself, this is where the mindset part comes in, but I caught myself and I realized that I was doing it and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> so they could be sneaky little thoughts. So don't think just because um, I'm at a healthy weight and I am an expert in this field, that I don't have sneaky thoughts too. So when clients come to me, I always give this advice on eating. You eat when you're hungry, meaning your stomach is growling, true hunger, and then you stop when you're comfortably full. If you followed that one suggestion, you would drop weight instantaneously. Because if you're only eating when your stomach is growling and you eat to a level that you're comfortably full, and yes, that's subjective, so everybody's going to be a little different, you would probably eat a lot less than what you are. So if you're eating when you're not hungry, then you're eating for emotional reasons. And being that we're in this quote unquote new normal, um, it can bring out all the emotions that you've been pushing aside before the coronavirus hit. So if you normally were a stress eater, then your stressful thoughts about the pandemic will make you want to eat even more. So my second tip is earn your sit time. I'm going to put this on a meme and put this on a social media post. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt out of it, but you have to earn your sit time. It can be very challenging too if you're in the house and you're sitting for work, you're sitting to help the kids for school, there's a lot of sit time and then you feel like you need to relax in front of the TV. Because you really have no one to answer to, you might feel like laying on the couch all day and binging on the shows that you quote unquote must catch up on, right? Or maybe you have that extra commute time because you aren't driving to work and you spend it doing more office work. So again, you're sitting. Even if you had the commute time, you know, you're probably sitting unless you take the train in and you're standing. So my professional recommendation is really to make a schedule. And you might think having a schedule is rigid and inflexible, but if you build in personal time, you'll not only be more productive accomplishing time tasks, but you'll also be able to relax and enjoy your personal time because you know everything else is taken care of because it's on the calendar. When I first started my business, I used to have a to-do list. And I am telling you the to-do list was like six pages long. And I just kept crossing things off, rewriting the to-do list until I had whittled it down. And looking at that to-do list is very daunting because you're constantly adding things. And as soon as one thing gets bumped off, it's like you add another one. But if you were to write down everything that you wanted to accomplish in the week or two weeks or a month, and you wrote everything out and down and then plotted it on a calendar and kind of blocked out your hours of what your time frame is for work, what your time frame is for personal life, that kind of thing. You will quickly find out what your priorities are and what your priorities aren't. <laughs> so definitely get it on a calendar. And of course, the hardest part about putting it on a calendar is following it and doing like if it's one o'clock and it says sit down and write an email, at one o'clock, you have to sit down and write an email no matter what. It's really honoring the commitments to yourself and what your personal goals are or professional goals. In order to earn your sit time, and when I say sit time, this is like relaxing time. You need to move throughout the day. 
a good goal to aim for is 10,000 steps per day. Again, it depends on where you're starting from. The average person walks about two to 3,000 steps, which is really significantly low. I find 10,000 to be like the average. I would even challenge you to hit 15 or 20,000 steps per day. Again, if you're starting from 2,000 steps, don't immediately go to 20,000 steps. You will hate me forever and you will be very sore. So make small adjustments. Just start by adding an additional 1,000 steps each day to whatever you're currently doing. If you're sitting most of the day, set a reminder to get up and move around your house. You could do some jumping jacks, you could do squats, even plank holds during a work break. If you have access to stairs, even one step, you have yourself a great cardio workout. Remember those step aerobics? You don't have to be all fancy, but you could just walk up and down that step, lift a knee up, step sideways, always be careful. But that is a great cardio workout. You could also walk around your yard, depending on what type of environment you live on or live in. You could go for a walk around the outside of your house or around the block course following health agencies directives on socially distancing. The other thing you could do is decrease your stress. So you have many options on how to look at this pandemic. You can stress out over the things you have absolutely no control over. You can also think nothing has gone wrong and you can have many varieties of thoughts in between the two. You get to think what you want to think. You also get to decide if you're going to be a victim to your circumstances or are you going to make powerful decisions no matter what. You could make the powerful decision to hire a coach and lose 10 pounds while in quarantine. You can make a powerful decision to start your, the business you've always wanted to. You can also curl up in the fetal position and cry. You can also blame others for what you don't have. You get to decide your choices and by making a decision, you can reduce your stress. You can also do some stretches to help relieve stress. You can check out my stretches in the exercise library on my YouTube channel, but even just a typical yawn stretch you know, like the kind you, when you first get out of bed, will be effective. Another suggestion I want to mention is take into account your mindset. Notice what you're thinking about when you're feeling stressed. What actions do you take when you're stressed? Like eating a bag of potato chips or lashing out at your partner, things like that. Don't judge yourself, but when you start paying attention to your thoughts, you soon will see why you have the results that you have in your life. This is one of the key skills that I teach my clients to lose weight. So when clients come to me, we work on a one-on-one -on -one basis, online coaching. So you can be anywhere pretty much in the world if you have an internet connection. And we dive deep into, because like we all know to move more and eat less, but why don't we do it? Why don't we do what we say we want? How many times have you told yourself you're going to lose the 40 pounds and now you're over 40? When is it going to happen? When is it going to click? When? It, what are you waiting for type thing? Like these are the things that we dive in. I do give a nutritional outline. It's not a diet. It's basically nutrition for your lifestyle and how you want to live and getting you the results that you want. So I also give customized workout plans and my clients, I have a client who just started with me. She lost almost four pounds in a week. And we only tweak two little things in her, you know, in her life. <laughs> I'm like, can you imagine what's going to happen in 51 weeks as we work together? And she's like, I can't wait. It is possible to lose weight over 40. So don't let that hold you back. That is just a thought you're thinking. If you are interested in learning how to work with me in a one-on-one -on -one situation and you're struggling with putting the pieces together and really like losing the weight for good, and not having it feel like you're sacrificing or depriving yourself or beating yourself up, I want to invite you to schedule a free consult with me. And you can go to shapeitupfitness.com slash chat with Nicole and schedule a call with me. The worst case scenario is we talk for 60 minutes, we figure out what's holding you back and we part as friends. The best case scenario is, is that you find out what's holding you back and you take the action steps that you need to really lose the weight for good, lose it for life. Now, believe it or not, there's going to come a time when like Anna in Frozen, the castle gates will reopen and we will be given the quote unquote, okay to freely go outside and resume life like it was prior to the pandemic. I'm sure life will change in some aspects, but at least like 
when we get to the point where the virus is contained and we're not we don't have that thought in the back of our head that we could get sick or we could make somebody else sick or anything like that um, when that does happen i want to offer you these post corona virus tips first off if during this pandemic you have not been exercising you need to start off slowly highly recommend walking as your first task <laughs> just get up and move around then once you've kind of mastered that we'll add in some sort of weight training again if you want a customized workout program and want to work with me schedule a phone call if you have gained weight realize that you cannot take it off with the right skills and tools meaning no quick fix diets no detoxing no starving yourself i mean intermittent fasting for 20 days don't go on a crash diet I really, I strongly, strongly, strongly cannot emphasize that it has to be a lifestyle for you. And the third part is, is you need to work on your mindset. Mindset is so key. The missing link, I really feel, to losing weight and keeping it off is all in the way you think. This is what I teach my clients. It's a skill set that once you learn it, you can use it for life. And the interesting part is, is once you learn these skill sets, it's not just applied to weight loss, it trickles. It has like a ripple effect throughout the rest of your life. When the coronavirus is finally over, here are some tips. We can have more work from home situations. We can appreciate what our teachers go through to teach our children, <laughs> for sure. We can go to the parks for exercise. We can work out at home. We can get through anything with the right mindset. If you love this podcast and what we talked about and are really interested in diving in more into your mindset and figuring out what's holding you back, I want to encourage you to go schedule that call right now. Go schedule a chat with me. You can find it at shapeitupfitness.com slash chat with Nicole. Again, it's an hour free chatting with me and we're going to find out where you are and where you want to go and what is holding you back from actually getting what you say you want. The worst case scenario is we spend an hour talking to each other and I help you out. The, the best scenario is, is that you decide you want to work together and I help you for the next year lose the 40 pounds that you've been struggling with. You can book a call at shapeitupfitness.com slash chat with Nicole. All right, that's all for me today. I hope this podcast was helpful to you and I will talk to you next week.